Uh, several years ago when I first met some students who were involved in the uh, Turkish Hizmet movement and they told me about this very interesting magazine that was addressing sort of larger issues of citizenship, life, philosophy, religion, and, and the everyday practice of ethics and uh, I began reading the magazine. I, I enjoy reading the magazine whenever a new issue comes up. I think it raises a lot of interesting questions that uh, are not raised normally in society by most other magazines that tend to deal with sort of either everyday news or practicalities or sort of issues as they come along. But Fountain is one of those few venues left where they step back and ask some big philosophical questions about again, society and faith and, and other issues that are often not addressed normally. There are many ideas that I've encountered reading the Fountain magazine, which I had never heard before, even though I, I like to think that I was, a little, was widely read in, in philosophy and practice. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm often surprised, you know, there are people who write there, which I normally would just have not come across in the other magazines and books that I tend to read. So I think it's the kind of magazine I would recommend to students because we always say at the university that it's wonderful to read people that you disagree with. It's wonderful to read people that you may not be within your normal scope of reading and to, to have your own ideas and precepts sort of challenged uh, by people as often the writers of Fountain are uh, experts in their own particular area. Well, what I like is that the authors of the Fountain tend to go into detail. They're not just philosophers. They tend to go into, for example, the scriptures of different uh, major faiths or the history of different countries and, and organizations and actually show how those uh, facts and details are the basis of, of beliefs, not the other way around. Well, I'm astonished at the variety of people, whether it's different religious leaders from practically any faith that I've ever imagined or heard of, to political leaders, to academics and historians. It's very rare today to get such a, a group of people from all the major parts of what are components of, of intellectual life to all contribute to the same venue. We live in a world where we're increasingly balkanized, where you know, academics just in a particular discipline just talk to each other, religious leaders just talk to each other, politicians just talk for each other, maybe for speech making, and there are very few venues left where you can have that true meeting of minds uh, like the Fountain Magazine. Well, I think factual understanding is the basis of tolerance and working together. Uh, you know, obviously, we live in a world where a lot of people proclaim they know something on a subject without actually having studied it, but based upon sort of drive-by opinions. The world of social media and blogging, for example, is just full of millions of opinions based on very, very little research and fact. And again, what really impresses me about the authors that I come across in The Fountain is there are obviously people who have deeply thought about something and studied that thing in depth for many, many years and finally come to a conclusion and are expressing their opinion based upon that intensive research. That's something that we try to teach as educators is that uh, facts come first, then opinion, not the other way around.